Well, hello everyone. This is Joey here from Wandering Hermits, and welcome to the first of hopefully many development videos for our point and click game, an adventurous tale set in the world of the Weave in the Void, of course. Yeah, so it's, we're just going to do a series here on, well, all sorts of different stuff, um, but primarily we're going to be trying to focus on the point and click adventure toolkit that you can get. Uh, from the Unreal Marketplace. Um, that's what houses this entire project. What we're looking at here is the demo that we released. Um, I'm just in the, of course, in the engine, uh, playing from the viewport. But we're going to take a look at some interesting things up and coming. First of, today we're going to look at just basically getting your scene set up. Um, and a lot of this is covered in the documentation. Before we look at that, um, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you get updates on future content from me and my brother, and maybe someday um, my sister-in-law. I mean, she's definitely going to have content on here, but I don't know if she ever has any plans to do anything herself, but definitely Tim and I are going to be releasing a lot of cool stuff in the future. So yeah, um, let's get into it. So let's look at, I'm going to try to pull this on the screen so I can show it. There it is. Boom. Point and click adventure toolkit. This is what we're talking about. Um, definitely, definitely recommend this. Um, you can set it up to where it'll use WASD controls too, so it doesn't have to be point and click, but it is set up for point and click mostly. Uh, but you can change it to any way that you want. But uh, just the blueprints alone that are within here are amazing so definitely check this out um, so in the documentation you know a lot of this stuff has already gone over so you download the toolkit open your scene the very first thing you have to do is add your player and you have to have a scene manager which this is what controls everything within your scene that's how it works um, and you need a camera uh, we we are using the whoops this is not we are using the fixed camera. There are different cameras that you can use. There's the advanced camera, which will follow the character, um, or there's the fixed camera. And we kind of like the old school feel of the fixed camera ourselves. But today, like I said, we're going to be looking at some of that. Um, that's the basics of it. It's pretty simple. That part is covered very good in the documentation that's provided. I feel like everyone will be able to get set up from there. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, by the way, comment, uh, whatever you need. The thing that starts getting interesting, though, is like, okay, I have my scene. Now what? Okay, well, now you start adding stuff. Um, the toolkit is really cool, and it has these things called doors, which is really cool. So doors are basically the teleporting feature of how you get from one scene to another scene, or... As we're fixing to do here in a second, what is this? Oh, that's my post-processing volume. Um, we're, you can do it within the same scene, which is what we're primarily going to be taking a look at today, because doors are really cool. So, close all this. So that you, you definitely want to have your own project folder. Um, and mine, as you can tell, is still called Project Dramon, which is what we were calling it before. It got changed to its actual name. Um, so I haven't changed it in here just because this is mine and nobody else is going to see this. Um, except for you guys. <laughs> Anyways, you definitely want to set up, you know, all your stuff within here. And I am not the world's most organized, but nobody, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm the only one at the moment working on the point and click. So I don't have to actually worry about how organized it is for somebody else because I kind of know where everything is and it works for me. So but you definitely want to have your own project folder besides just the toolkit folder. Um, you can put it within the toolkit folder, that's fine, but you definitely want to hold everything else that's not part of the toolkit in your own folder. So in the toolkit, if you just search door, you know you have two different types. You have the door base and you have the door visual. So the door visual is the one that has the actual uh, mesh with it. Okay. Um, 
if you don't want to see an actual door, like what we're going to be doing here, you're going to want to use one of these, just the base. And the way that doors work is they have to be tagged. Okay, so the way to do that is just go to project settings, search tag, and you can add, you, you can call them whatever you want. You can call them A, B, C, D, E, F, G, come up with fun other names, um, but this is something you're going to want to familiar yourself, familiarize yourself with because, as you can tell, um, characters get tags, uh, doors, everything gets tagged. That's how, that's how the um, scene, manager, scene manager knows how to process the information. So I've already set these up as Sheriff Store 1 and Sheriff Store 2. And the reason for that is because if you caught the uh, meeting... I think it was last week, we were talking about the next area to work on, which is going to be this area here. So this is the starter. This is where you start. Blacksmith, tavern, bookstore, general store. Here is where we're going next. Um, so got the sheriff's building, this little uh, shack. It's not really a shack. It's more like a storage shed, you know, for whatever people need for the farms and stuff like that. Um, we'll play around with that and try to figure out exactly what the purpose of that building will be. Um, and then this really cool big tree. So that's where we're headed. So we're going to want to tag this. Let's tag it. Oh, I was showing you the wrong thing. Gameplay tag. This is where your target what I was showing you earlier was, uh, we'll get to that. First, you have to tag your door. So let's call this one Sheriff's Door 1. Okay. We're going to grab this. We're just going to duplicate it. And we're going to drag this one over to somewhere here. This doesn't matter. This is just, I'm showing you how it works. Then you're going to want to tag this one, because it can't be the same, but to Sheriff's Door 2. Now the way this works is you go back to the first one, target door is, why is that not showing up? Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Oh, that's why. Well, hang on, though, because these use tags. Well, hang on a second. I'm confused for the second. Navigation, target door, non-target scene. Oh, okay. That's why. Um, My bad. I guess for tags, you don't actually need them. That's right. Okay. My mistake. The tags come into play when you are switching scenes. So see this where it says target scene door? Okay. So it appears that, now I feel like a silly person, but whatever. Um, it, it would appear that within the same scene, you don't have to actually set up the tags. Now you do have to, okay, so for instance, let's look over here at this one. So it's tagged, and if we go to the front, yep, target scene, interior scene is known as tavern, and then it's looking for this door tag within the other scene. So the tagging the doors actually comes into play when you want to change scenes entirely. Um, when you're in the in, in interior or within the same scene excuse me it would appear that it just goes off the name of the asset itself okay well, that's good to know I uh, didn't remember that so we click that and we can do target door here. okay so now those are set up they know to read each other um, 
Now I bet if we click play, I'm probably not going to be able to get there because I don't actually have navigation volume set up for that area. But yeah, see, it doesn't know what to do. But it did actually teleport my character to the other scene, as you can, or the other door, as you can tell. Okay, so that's how doors work um, within the same scene. Don't have to worry about tags like I showed you, but that is good information to know if you do want to set up a door for a um, separate scene. So, like, um, let's just use more lexicons here. This door goes to interior scene. That's how you set it up. So, we have a very similar thing that I just did in the outside that we do here. So we have two different within the same scene. So that's what I was trying to do. So the tags come into play, like I said, when you're changing scenes. And when I say scenes, I mean actual like maps. Um, I will show you. Oops, get rid of that. So scenes. Yeah, these are your different maps, and that's what I'm calling a scene. That's how that works. Now the next thing that you need to add that we can play with here um, is a camera. So like I said, you have the advanced camera and you have the fixed camera. We like the fixed camera. So let's just throw this in here. Uh, do, do, do. We kind of get something that we're after. Kind of want, kind of probably gonna go for like, oh something like, something like this. So we need to move this down. Add, move it. Forgive me, I'm just kind of playing with this here. Get to where we can, okay. Something like that, if we pin that. Should be able to see our guy. T-zones. The way we're gonna do that is these cameras have a really cool feature um, trigger volumes. So you can change based on the trigger volume which camera is going to show up. So, oops, let's do that. And you can rename these, like I said, to um, so that you remember what they're called. Um, I don't worry about it just because that's how I roll. That, this, it is not a, where is the setting I'm looking for? It is not the scene starting camera. So I want to get rid of that. Trigger volume. Just come down here and find this one. There you go. So now when we click play, should, as long as we set everything up right. Oh, except our character didn't. Hang on. He didn't quite hit the tr the volume trigger. And I bet if I had to guess. That's probably not helping anything. Let's just go ahead for simplicity. Let's make the nav mesh bounds bigger. There we go. Oh, well that's why I have the door backwards. So if you saw he went through it and came back. So there you go. 
and now if we come back to the door it's gonna stay on this camera because we don't actually have a trigger to trigger us back to the original camera so we have to add that but that's that's the basics of how that works so if we click this yeah we need to turn this That should work better. Just check, double check that. Boom, there you go. And as you can tell, this camera is moving. If you want it to be fixed entirely like our cameras are, you just come into here and you just drop these values to zero. The X and Y, or the Y on both of these. Then, when you zone, triggers that, and now it no longer moves. So that's how we get the basics set up for our scenes. Um, see, so as you can tell, we're in, we're in the same scene, but now we have a completely different area to deal with so you know I'll tweak this and you know the, the the watchtower was just here you know for something in the background um, we'll move that out of the way probably we, we'll, we'll find somewhere to put this um, but you know we got to get this all set up now so now the next thing to do for me is I'll start blocking things out you know just trying to get a feel for how I want this to look um, and then I have to worry about, you know, if I'm over here, because as you can tell, to save resources, I don't have all these buildings fleshed out all the way around, just for performance reasons. So I have to start looking at all that stuff now. So, like I said, that's how you get your scene set up. You will have your scene manager, you'll have your character, and you'll have a camera. And from there, you can do all sorts of stuff. And the, the doors are the next thing, because that's how you get your character. You know, that's how you change things up. So doors are very important. And that is something that um, I know I had a rough time with in the documentation, because, you know, it's documented. But, you know, hopefully this video helps. If it doesn't, oh, well, I tried. Sorry. <laughs> um, anyways, I'll probably wrap it up for there. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you want more, you know, to see the rest of these, uh, make sure you subscribe and stick around. Um, you got to hit the bell icon, though, so that way you get more notifications when we have new videos. Um, check us out on Discord, and if you're interested, consider pre-ordering the adventure game. Um, you can check out the demo. Um, all sorts of wonderful links will be to below. We'll see you later.